Hi there, this is Chris, Champion of the Cup Moto Legends. Today I want to talk to you about Rucker Gore-Tex jackets. In this review I'm going to look at all nine jackets that are in the current Rucker Gore-Tex range. Some of these jackets, we're recording this in October 2023, some of these jackets have only just arrived with us. But I have seen the collection for 2024, there are no new Rucker Gore-Tex jackets coming through next year. And what that means is that the range that we're going to be discussing today will pretty much be unchanged until at least the spring of 2025, maybe even the summer of 2025. Now in the interest of keeping things short and sweet, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to be going into much detail with any of the jackets. We've made videos about most of them and you'll find the details on the website. What today is about is helping people work out which Rucker jacket is going to be best for their particular needs. But first I wanted to say a few words about Rucker because it's not going to be the brand for everybody. Rucker is in essence a brand that's aimed at the Northern European rider. They do suits and one suit in particular, they're designed for people who ride in warmer climes, but basically the wind, the rain and the cold are the natural habitats of a Rucker suit. There are those, and I suppose particularly our friends from Klim, who would try to persuade you that a well-vented laminate suit is the best thing for crossing the Sahara. They want you to believe that they have created, I suppose, the Holy Grail, a suit that will keep you comfortable in whatever the conditions. I have to tell you that's an illusion. A suit that works in all conditions, in all weathers, simply does not exist. If it did, you'd be wearing it and I'd be rich. Now, if you're going to be riding in the hottest conditions, you need to adopt a layering approach, such as would be familiar to any walker, climber, or anybody who's been in the military. You wear something breathable next to the skin, then you wear an insulating layer over the top to keep heat in, and then you wear a waterproof over the top to obviously keep you dry in the rain. The problem is that when we apply this methodology to motorcycling, you have to stop now and again to change things. But really, that's the only way that you can be comfortable in all conditions. The reality is, that we can take a breathable jacket and we can make it warm and dry by putting layers underneath and layers over the top, but we cannot take a waterproof garment and make it breathable enough to work in the hottest conditions. No rucker or indeed any waterproof suit is going to be capable of coping in all circumstances. Rucker makes some brilliant gear and we're going to spend a few minutes explaining why, but don't believe everything you read or everything you hear. If you ride through the winter, if you commute all year round, then it may well be that Rucker is your best option. But if you're a weekend rider, you go out on nice days at the weekend and put in maybe one or two trips overseas, then it's probably not Rucker that you want or need. Almost certainly there'll be something that is less expensive and more appropriate. The truth is that Rucker does some things very, very well. Other things, however, not so well. Before I go on to talk about the nine jackets that are in the current Rucker Gore-Tex range, and having already discussed the reasons why you might not want or might not need Rucker, I want to talk to you a little bit about why you might want to go for the finished brand, because in our view, it is still something quite special. Rucker is not the most upscale technical brand in the market by accident. They've been making high-end gear since the early 1980s. They were one of the first people to work with Gore, for example. And between them, the two companies pretty much worked out how to make motorcycle gear waterproof, how to keep bikers dry from the outside, but also from the inside, because in the coldest conditions, that can be far more important. And that's because if we get wet from the inside, because the membrane doesn't breathe, we can lose body heat 20 times faster. And in the coldest conditions, when that happens, then hypothermia is a very real concern. Rucker, it has to be said, is also the premier name in laminated gear. And they've been making laminated gear longer than anybody. Indeed, once again, the development of laminated motorcycle clothing was very much a joint undertaking between Rucker and Gore. In the early days, they made mistakes. They made suits that weren't particularly waterproof. They made suits that didn't breathe particularly well. But over time, they refined their, their methodologies to a position today where one can be pretty sure that if you're wearing a Rucker garment with a laminated membrane, you're going to stay totally dry and you'll have a jacket that will never wet out. But of course, a motorcycle jacket is more about just staying dry. Protection is for many a major concern. Now, some people stress about the EN17092 rating of a jacket or a garment, but that's because they don't understand what it is. EN17092 is not a safety standard. It is not a predictor of how well a garment is going to protect you. EN17092 is just an abrasion resistance test for the outer fabric of a garment. And what tends to keep us live in an accident is not normally the abrasion resistance of the fabric of the, whatever garment we're wearing, it's the armor that is being carried by that garment. And that's why whatever the EN17092 rating of a Rucker product, you will always be 
better off in a rucker garment because it comes with the very largest level two armor. There are some AAA rated jackets out there that come with tiny level one armor. Rucker tends to go for reasons normally of breathability with A rated fabrics and AA rated fabrics. But because you get this huge armor, huge level two armor, in the real world, I think Rucker makes for the most protective riding gear that money can buy. There is, of course, another issue here. EN17092 is this measure of abrasion resistance, but armor plays a huge role in abrasion resistance. No one has ever seen a piece of rucker armor that is worn through in an accident, which is why we think that an A-rated rucker suit is probably more abrasion resistant than certainly any double A-rated suit out there and probably a lot of triple A-rated ones. Bottom line, if you have an accident, you've probably got a better chance of walking away unscathed if you're wearing rucker. We have seen results of dozens of accidents where riders were wearing rucker. This is a brand that everybody trusts and with good reason. And that includes obviously the police. Now, I wanna talk for a little bit now about prices and warranties. Rucker gear is not inexpensive. There will always be cheaper options out there, but the brand offers a six year warranty. And what a lot of riders do therefore, they take the price of say a suit and they divide it by the number of years of the warranty to give them a guaranteed or a cost for the guaranteed life of a garment. So let's say, for example, you pay £2,400 for a suit. That is guaranteed for six years. You've got a guaranteed use of six years within that suit. That's a cost of £400 a year. That's a cost of just a little bit over a pound a day. And that doesn't seem a huge amount to pay for one of the best suits that money can buy. Let's compare that with buying a Halvarsons suit. You might get a Halvarsons laminated suit for something like £1,200. But Halvarsons brings with it, as do many brands, brings with it a two-year warranty. Now that's £600 a year, so it's more expensive per year. But the problem is this, if that suit, and we would hope that it would last much longer, but if that suit starts to leak after 25 months, you've got no choice but to replace it. If the initial investment of a rucker suit is an issue, you can always take out 12 months interest-free credit because it's got to be said that it's a shame to lose out on value that that is good, that is that good. Remember also that when you buy Rucker, you get Gore's lifetime waterproofing guarantee. Put simply, a Gore garment, a Rucker garment is guaranteed to keep you dry for life, forever. Anyway, that's the sales pitch over. Let's now look at some of the jackets and try to work out which is the one that's gonna work best for you. As far as we're concerned, the Nivala is Rucker's top of the range jacket. The Kingsley is a bit more expensive and has a double A rating as opposed to the Nivala single A rating. The Nivala has stretch in the fabric and the Kingsley doesn't. And it's the removal of the stretch that gives the Kingsley that little bit extra abrasion resistance. But we take the view that we'd rather be more comfortable for all of our rides than have a little bit of extra abrasion resistance just in case an accident does happen. Accidents do happen, but we kind of take the view that if you are more comfortable on the bike, you'll be riding more safely, you might be able to avoid having that accident in the first place. The Nivala is constructed using a three layer Gore-Tex laminated membrane. It just doesn't get more waterproof than that. But the stretch makes this jacket simply the most comfortable Gore-Tex jacket on the market. You get Rucker's huge level two armor throughout, including the back. You get a level one chest protector. And all of that explains why we're just not bothered about the single A rating. The venting on the Nivala is okay. It's about as good as it gets on a Rucker touring outfit, but I suppose it's no Klim in that respect. Much above 25 degrees, and you're going to wish that you were wearing something else. One of the standout features of the Nivala is that it comes with a standalone, doesn't zip in, down filled inner jacket. As I said, it doesn't attach, so you just wear it or you don't. It's super warm and it looks great if you're wearing it off the bike as well. The Nivala is the jacket that every police rider would prefer to ride in. Some forces make their riders wear heavy leather suits, while others unfortunately simply can't afford the Nivala. And that's a shame because this is simply the best Gore-Tex suit that money can buy. The Calyx was always designed as an entry-level rucker outfit. The first iteration, the Calyx One, was, I've got to say, a little bit horrid. This version is much better. It's constructed from a two-layer Gore-Tex membrane. Now, it's true that the price point allows the suit to be afforded by those who might not normally have been up for the brand. 
The waterproofing can be taken for granted because of course it's a Gore-Tex membrane. The Calyx has pretty reasonable venting, as good as you get pretty much on any Rucker touring and commuting outfit. It comes with Rucker's huge level two armor in the elbows and the shoulders, but you do not get a back protector. And I suppose that is where the issue starts. See, in order to hit this lower price point, sacrifices had to be made. So the Calyx comes without a back protector. You don't get a thermal lining. There's no storm color. There's no GTX cuffs. And there are no zips at the ends of the sleeves and so on. In other words, you don't get many of the things that make riding a little bit more bearable. But it does have a place in the range. It's a bit basic, but it hits a price point. We don't, I've got to say, particularly like the fit. It can be a little bit boxy and there's no way or very few ways of adjusting the fit. But this is still, it's got to be said, the jacket that the Met supplies to its riders. Now, Rucker did develop a suit particularly for the police. It was called the Kingsley and they developed it because the police had said, we must have a double A rated suit. But eventually when it came out, it was just too expensive for most of them, which is why the Met ended up supplying the Calyx to its riders. The suit is actually, ironically, not even tested under EN17092 because it dates back to an era when Rucker had another way of getting C approval on its outfits. But the 600 denier shell and the fact that there are no extra reinforcements on the shoulders and the elbows tell us that undoubtedly this would only ever be an A-rated suit. But I have to say we are very excited about what's coming through for 2024. There's a new suit called the Kemi it's the same price as the Calyx, but it has a lot of the bells and whistles that this jacket doesn't. It's got stretch fabric. In fact, it's more like a two-layer Nivala. I think it's going to be a winner. Rucker has made its name on the back of laminated membranes. It's what Rucker is famous for. And for those who do big miles and who ride all year round, laminate may be the way to go because the more miles you do, the greater are the chances that you're going to reach a situation where your jacket wets out. But that does not mean that laminates are the best option for everybody. A jacket with a drop lining membrane is going to be more comfortable, it's going to be warmer, and on a pari pursue basis, it's going to be less expensive. And so we would suggest that for the leisure rider, the weekend rider who does, I don't know, between five and 10,000 miles a year, that rider's probably gonna be better off with a drop liner outfit because the chances of that rider finding themselves in a situation where their jacket wets out are, it's gotta be said, fairly remote. The Comfort Art is a drop liner jacket, but what makes it so special is the stretch that's woven into the outer shell in the way that it is with the Rucker Nivala. It makes the Comfort Art amazingly comfortable, and I think we would suggest that it's probably the most comfortable jacket in the Rucker range. Of course, you've got all the other good stuff, all the other stuff that you need. So you've got reasonable venting, you've got a full suite of D3O, so shoulders, elbow, and back. You don't get a chest protector, however. You've got a removable 60 gram inner thermal liner. You've got a concealed storm collar. Overall, this is one of our favorite jackets here at Motor Legends. If you think you need laminate, so be it. But the truth is that many people who do think they need laminate actually don't. The Comfort Art, it has to be said, is not the suit you want or not the jacket you want if you're someone who's doing over 15,000 miles a year. It's also not the right jacket to be wearing if you're gonna be riding in really hot the climate, so anywhere above 25 degrees, 25 to 30 degrees, this jacket's gonna become increasingly uncomfortable. But for the rest of us who avoid the rain where we can, but inevitably get caught in it from time to time, the Comfort Art is probably the very best suit on the market. The Nivala is the jacket that pretty much every police rider up and down the country would prefer to ride in. But because the police never really understood EN17092 and what it meant for protecting riders, they went and told Rucker that Rucker needed to develop a double A rated suit in order to tender for police contracts. And that is why Rucker developed this jacket, the Rucker Kingsley. Ironically, having bought this out, the police then said, I'm sorry, we can't afford it. The Kingsley is in essence, the Nivala with the stretch removed, because when you've got stretch, something like elastine woven into a fabric, it makes it weaker, and therefore it performs less well on the abrasion tests. Then what Rucker did, they added on some stronger material, some more abrasion resistant material onto the shoulders and the elbows. This is actually Keprotec, and with those additions, this jacket was easily able to pass AA. 
Now, in most other respects, the Kingsley pretty much replicates the Nivala. So you get the same duck down liner, you get level two throughout, level two D3O th throughout, back, shoulders and elbows, and a level one chest protector. The venting is pretty much identical to Nivala, so as good as it gets on a rucker touring suit. You get GTX cuffs at the ends of the sleeves, you get a concealed storm color, and all the other goodies. So the trade-off really is very simple. The Kingsley is more abrasion resistant than Nivala. It just is not as comfortable. Our view is that Nivala is as protective as any road rider needs for road riding, but I suppose that's not our call. We vote for comfort, but that doesn't mean anyone else has to. The Comfort R, which we've already spoken about, is a drop liner jacket. With the stretch that's woven into its outer chassis, it is supremely comfortable. But with all the nonsense spouted about EN17092, Rucker was concerned that the market might reject the Comfort R because of its single A rating. So they set out to create a double A rated version of it. And that's basically what the Pathfind R is. It's a Comfort R, but with added abrasion resistance. Now to achieve this, Rucker merely removed the stretch from the fabric. They chose a fabric that didn't have stretch in because stretch makes a material weaker. And they added layers of 1500 denier cordura here on the shoulders and elbows, as opposed to the 500 denier that you got on the Comfort R. But in most other respects, the two jackets are almost identical. You get the same level two D3O in the shoulders and the elbows, although on the Pathfind R, you do not get a back protector. The Pathfind R is a hundred pounds cheaper, but at a back protector and they're gonna be the same price. So really, we don't quite understand what's going on there. The Pathfinder does not have a storm color. And even though you get vents up the flanks, you do not get any exhaust vents in the back. And that's really the sum of it. The choice is yours. You've got, I think, a very simple choice of more comfort versus more abrasion resistance. Given that comfort will affect every single ride we go out on, we would choose the Comfort R. In my intro, I suggested that as a Northern European brand, Rucker was best suited to the wet and the cold. And as a generalization, I think that is pretty true. But Rucker has a right to try to take some market share from Klim. So in their range, they have three jackets that have what I suppose you would call more of an adventure feel. This jacket, the Trek R, is one of them. In concept, it's most akin to the held Crazy Evo jacket in that it has a waterproof liner has a removable waterproof liner rather. So this is what we would consider to be a proper adventure jacket in the way that we don't consider jackets to be if they have a laminated membrane. The idea with jackets where you can remove the membrane is that when you remove them, air can better flow through the jacket. So we can sweat more easily and the cool air can reach us, be that through the outer chassis or through the vents. If you're working hard off-road, this is the kind of jacket you need. What's interesting with the Trek R, as it is with the Held, is that the Gore-Tex waterproof liner can be worn on the inside or the outside. So if you were riding through a short shower, you would leave the liner on the inside, but if there was a chance of heavy rain for a prolonged time and you were worried about wetting out, you would put the liner on the outside. The jacket contains stretch panels for comfort. You've got lots of adjusters, you've got more pockets than you'll ever need, and you've got a lot of venting on this jacket, as you would expect on an adventure jacket. The shell is a particularly lightweight 500 denier cordura, but that's because abrasion resistance is not quite so important when you're riding off-road. What is important is lightness and breathability, and that's what the 500 denier cordura enables Ruckers to achieve. In terms of armor, you get level two D3O in the shoulders and elbows. In fact, on Rucker's website, they suggest that the back protector is level one. We think that's a mistake. All of our stock has a level two protector in. The jacket is A-rated, but again, as I've mentioned, because when you're riding off-road, abrasion resistance isn't so important. That is not an issue for us. Klim, it has to be said, is the name in adventure riding. But ironically, they do not have a proper adventure riding jacket with a removable liner like this one. The Explore R is Rucker's version of a classic Klim adventure jacket in that it comes with a laminated membrane. In this case, it's a three layer Gore-Tex Pro laminated membrane. And I suppose that means that it's most akin to jackets like the Klim Badlands or the Klim Kodiak. 
This is the construction that Klim would have us believe is the best option if you're going to be riding off-road or in really hot weather. We fundamentally disagree. If you're working up a sweat or riding in hot conditions, the last thing you want anywhere near your body is a waterproof membrane. It doesn't matter how many vents your jacket's got, you'd be better off in something without a membrane in the first place. And so for us, the Explore R is just a waterproof jacket with lots of venting. Of course, with all the pockets and the central adjuster, the jacket has a bit more of a, an adventure aesthetic, but really the Explore R is just for the adventure rider who rarely strays off the black stuff. Now the jacket comes equipped with level two D3O, D3O armor throughout, so you get D3O, level two D3O in the shoulders, elbows, and in the back, you get a level one chest protector. You get these extra overlays on the shoulders of elbows of 1500 Denny Cordura, and it's that that contributes to the fact that this jacket is AA rated under EN17092. All the other stuff is pretty much as you would expect. You've got a storm collar concealed at the back of the neck. You've got adjusters where you need them. You've got stretch where it helps, lots of pockets, and as many vents as you would expect on a jacket like this. The Trek R is the suit that would most be able to take on Klim, but I think the UK importer is so unconvinced of that as a possibility that he's bringing it in only in black. And that means that it's presumably for the GS rider who just wants a standard touring and commuting outfit to go with his peaked helmet and buckled boots. The Remo R is a bit of a hybrid. Not sure that we've come across anything quite like it. First of all, of course, it's got that adventure look. So it's a longer jacket. You've got these large flat pockets and these adjusters in the waist. It comes equipped with a two layer Gore-Tex laminated membrane. Now in our world, what that normally means is, therefore, this is not a proper adventure jacket because we always bang on about how a membrane reduces the breathability of a garment, making it harder for us to sweat, making it harder for the oncoming air to cool the body down. An adventure jacket, indeed the Remo R, an adventure jacket will always come with lots of vents, but those vents in some ways are just trying to compensate for the fact that there's a membrane there in the first place. So normally we feel that jackets like this, adventure jackets with laminated membranes are more for road riders who want to adopt an adventure look. But I have to say that the Remo R is not that jacket. It has been produced very much with off-road riding in mind. Unlike the Explore R, which is also a laminated adventure jacket in the Rucker range, this fits really loose. And what that means is it's been designed to move about on the bike. This really does have off-road riding in sight. The main feature of the Remo R, however, is that it does not come with any armor. It has been designed to wear with something like Rucker's RPS AFT jacket. That, in other words, is a bodysuit that holds the armor. And that is the best way, if you are riding off-road, of keeping the armor in place, because those suits just lock the armor in to the elbows and shoulders and so on. So even though, personally, I don't think I would ever go off-road or ride somewhere hot with a jacket with a membrane, this is an interesting jacket. The other stuff is pretty much as one might anticipate. You've got the pockets that I've spoken about already, you've got adjusters, you've got all of those vents. On the shoulders and the elbows, you get 500 denier overlays of Cordura. That's not a particularly heavy weight, and that would normally suggest that this jacket would only pass EN17092 at the A level. But in fact, this jacket is not C rated at all because it does not need to be, because Rucker have introduced it as an off-road jacket, and you do not need a C rating for off-road equipment. And clearly, Rucker just doesn't see this as the kind of jacket that you're going to go sliding down the road in. And not only that this is probably the softest, nicest to wear laminate jacket I've ever come across. It's got a beautiful peach skin feel to the fabric. It is a super lightweight jacket to wear. It is very much a specialist bit of kit. It is not for everyone, but I suppose there are gonna be put some people out there for whom this is the perfect jacket. The Voyage R is to Nivala what the Pathfind R is to the Comfort R. That is to say that the Voyage R is basically a Nivala without the stretch. When you remove stretch from the outer shell of a jacket, you make it stronger. And that's why the Voyage R passes EN17092 at the AA standard rather than the Nivala's single A level. Once again, this is gonna come down to a very simple question. Do you value extra comfort or do you want a bit more abrasion resistance? You probably know where we stand on that matter. But anyway, we're gonna go through the differences between the two jackets. One of the main differences is that the Voyage R does not come with an inner 
duck down liner. When you take that out of the equation, that means that the difference in cost is about 200 pounds. Now, that's a very real scenario because for example, if you come and buy Univala from us, we will buy back the downliner. So there's a scenario where you could come here, you are looking at the difference in price of just 200 pounds. But for that 200 pounds, you're going to lose all of the stretch that comes in every panel of the Nivala. And it's the stretch that makes the Nivala such a supremely comfortable jacket to wear. Okay, you do get some stretch on the Voyage R, you get some stretch here behind the shoulder, some concertina stretch, and you get some stretch panels in the arms. You do lose a couple of vents here because the Nivala's got some vents, the Voyage R doesn't. You do not get a chest protector with the Voyage R in the way that you do with the Nivala. When you factor in those differences, then the price difference between the two jackets is really almost, it is neg negligible. But you still get with the Voyage R most of the bells and whistles that you might ever want. So you get neoprene in the collar, you get level two D3O armor in the shoulders, in the elbows, in the back. You don't however get a chest protector which you do get with the Nivala. You do get GTX cuffs and you do get a concealed storm collar. You get vents up the flanks, you get vents in the shoulders and you've got vents, you've got exhaust vents at the back of the jacket. So really what it boils down to is a very simple choice. You have to choose. Do you want comfort for every journey you ever take, you ever undertake, or do you want the extra brazier resistance that hopefully you will never need? Remember again that with the huge level two armor, that you get in a rucker jacket, a single A rated rucker jacket is going to be as strong, as protective as just about any double A rated jacket on the market. But to be fair, one has to say that if this is a single, so if this is a double A rated jacket and you've got the same huge armor, this is going to be more protective than just about any triple A rated jacket out there. And in truth, there aren't many of those. So once more for us, it's about riding safely and about riding and that means about riding comfortably so for us i'm afraid it's still the nivala if you'd like to see more rucker gear then visit the website motorlegends.com if you'd like to learn more about these suits or the jackets rather that we've been discussing today then if you go to the screen and click on one of the links sometimes they're up there sometimes they're down there that will take you to a dedicated section that we've created when you're there, you can check out the availability of any of the jackets we've been talking about. You can check out the spec. And obviously, if you want to order one of the jackets, you can do that there and then. When you buy from us, we try to make the process as simple, straightforward, and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on any item of protective wear that you buy from us. Returns are totally free. And what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return something to us. We have undoubtedly the best price promise in the business. Now, John Lewis was rightly famed for its never only undersold price promise. We go one stage better. If you can find a competitor selling any product that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that competitor's price by a full 10%. There are a few terms and conditions associated with what we call our price beat. Nothing particularly onerous, I can assure you. But if you are going to attempt to price beat us, I suggest you go over to the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. If in the future you'd like to receive bulletins from us about new products, go to the website. At the top of the page, there's a piece of a script that says newsletter sign up. Click on there. Within seconds, you'll be in business. If, however, you prefer to get your information video graphically, that is to say in this form, we'd be simply delighted if you want to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Finally, I'd like to make mention of our fabulous little shop here at Moto Legends. We're based about a mile from the centre of Guildford, a mile from the railway station. And as I've suggested, it's a small shop, it's got a small footprint, but it's attached to our warehouse where we have more than four million pounds worth of gear arranged over three floors. Technically, that makes this the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the UK. But we think that we are far more than just the amount of merchandise we have here in the building. We're all about service. We're all about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have the highest five-star ranking in the business. When you come to see us, we'll serve you any of the finest Illy Italian coffee, or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And who knows, if you're really lucky, you might even get to sample one of our delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits.